On the broadcast today, some senior school emails have been hacked. Basketball season has started. We find out how the team begins their season. And we learn how to support our community and all these stories and more because Wildcat News starts now. Good morning, West Johnson. I'm Marissa Green. And I'm Jarrett Spinn with this week's episode of Wildcat News. Last week, there was a serious case of email hacking. Eric Bean tells us more. Since its creation, the Internet has fundamentally changed the way we live, work, and play. It's also changed the way we cheat. Recently, several students were caught hacking emails in an attempt to cheat on a senior English project for the book 1984. These hackers aren't the super smart computer nerds you'd think. All they needed to gain entry was the user's birthday. The default password on a school Gmail account is the first initial of the first name, followed by the first three initials of the last name, and then finally followed by the user's birthday. So how can you protect yourself from cheaters? The answer is simple. Change your password. Changing the password isn't as hard as you might think. Simply log into your email, click on your name, and then account. Next, click Security and go to Password and press Change Password. Type in your current password and then enter your new password made up of a mix of letters, numbers, and symbols. Many students don't change their password because they're afraid they would forget the password and be locked out. Fortunately, the Media Center can reset your password if you forget it. Change your own password is the easiest way to protect yourself and your work. I'm Eric Bean, Wildcat News. Thanks, Eric. Jamie Snover gives us an inside look to some of the exciting things that happen in our French classes. Last Friday, students from all over Johnson County came to West for the French Festival. The French Festival is an inter-county competition between all the French students in the county. This was the fourth event that we've had. The events that happen during the French Festival are a song, a poem, a play, the spelling bee, the grammar test, improv, and chalk art. The song is my favorite part of the French festival because it's fun to do, it's the end thing, and everybody gets into it. This year is the only year that our song wasn't horribly embarrassing. Two French students share their experience. Uh, the French festival is when four schools come together to celebrate French culture. It's always Triple S, Clayton, West Johnston, and Corinth holders. Dylan Hales shares what he got out of the French festival. The French festival helps me learn French because instead of being in a classroom setting and writing and reading French, we get to talk it and we get to really apply what we learn in class through performing. Well, it's educational in the sense that it lets us apply our French knowledge to the real world. Take French, not Spanish, because there's no Spanish festival. I'm Jamie Snover, Wildcat News. It looks like they had a great time. Maybe I should have taken French. I think I'll suggest it to some future students. Beginning last year, the freshman class began a new tradition of creating a freshman canvas. The freshman canvas is it's a canvas that me and two other students are going to paint, and it's going to be presented at graduation when the freshman class graduates. The actual canvas itself, me and Vienna planned out the actual design of the canvas, and Miss Massengill planned like the actual canvas idea. The design is a wild cat climbing up a wall and we're going to try and make it look really realistic and 3D looking and we're going to put the thumbprints on the side of the canvas and people who drop out or don't graduate then we're going to cross them off the canvas. Freshman English teacher Brenda Massengill shares how this idea began. Last year the freshmen did an identity project when they came in and a couple of my students decided they wanted to do something with school spirit. So they came up with an idea to do a canvas. So I went to Michael's, got the canvas, and they put class of 2017, and then got the fingerprints of all the freshmen. Um, and the goal is to keep the canvas all the way to the senior year. This year, I decided to get nominations of students that have artistic ability 
and let them work on the canvas and do more of an artistic approach to it. So that's where, where it came from this year. That's really a creative idea. I wish we would have done something like that. Me too, Marissa. Basketball season has finally arrived. Juwan Holder shows us the beginning of the season. Wade Eatman gives a description of the Jamboree. The Jamboree is where a bunch of teams get together and scrimmage type. So I think we have 10 teams that all play each other. We did pretty good. Our defense is looking good. Our offense is getting there, but we can only go up. Gabriel Moses speaks about how their season will go. Uh, our season will go pretty good. Um, like I said, <clears throat> um, through the weeks and weeks that we practice, um, it'll just go continue to increase. Uh, goals that we have are just doing better than we did last year um, to show to the county that we've done pretty good throughout the, um, throughout the years. And the Jamboree was Triple S, Cleveland, Fike, and Hopton. So we'll come out to support us at Triple S. Uh, support JV also, and the game should start about 3.30. Reporting to you from the Men's Basketball Jamboree, I'm Juwan Holder, Wildcat News. Thanks, Juwan. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Tired of boring big box pizza chains? Big Al has you covered with handmade pizza, wings, and garlic nubs. I make your pizza with fresh quality ingredients right as soon as you order it. Located at 4042 behind Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. Big Al's Pizza and Wings, handmade for you. Marissa, have you noticed how quiet it's been in the hall so far this year? I sure have. It's probably because Bonilla left. We talked to Elizabeth Bonilla about where she is now. I ran away to Mississippi and live down by the Gulf Stream waters. I mean, I grew up there, so we went back. I mean, I'm in the deep south, so that's different. And it's really like a huge country club. We asked Bonilla if she continued to teach chemistry. Yes, I teach at Pascagoula High School in Pascagoula, Mississippi. Go Panthers, Panther Nation. I went from one wildcat to like a beach wildcat panther. Students wonder which school is Bonilla's favorite and who she misses most from West Johnston. I can't answer that question, okay? It's like two different relationships. It's like I was married to y'all, right? And I love y'all, and we had like a really tumultuous, tumultuous breakup, a bad breakup. And like for a while when I moved down there, I wasn't over it yet, and I cried a lot. And now I'm actually in a new relationship and like happy, you know? And it's different and exciting. Uh, it's just different. I love y'all both. I mean, I mean, like I miss my kids the most. You know she likes us better. Of course she does. Once a wildcat, always a wildcat. Catherine Sorrell reports on buying and eating locally and how it benefits our community. Living in the country has its perks, such as buying fresh local produce like this. Frankie Matthews tells us why we should purchase local products. You should shop local because you're keeping your money in the area. So the money that is spent here kind of does stay in a circle of the community where when you're buying from national chains, the money that is uh, spent there goes just no telling where. I try to shop local for the fact that it supports my neighbors, gives money in their pockets and it's returned back to you because it's staying around here. It's not going overseas or anywhere else. Anita Johnson explains why you should avoid supermarket products. Some of those apples are about 14 months old. A lot of times they get that when it's not ripe and they will gas it to ripen it faster. They also wax a lot of stuff. That's very deceiving because it looks beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, it actually rots from the inside out. There's a lot of chemicals added to meat in the grocery store. There's an item called pink slime. If you buy hamburger, you always see that pad in the bottom. That's not to absorb blood, it's actually to absorb a product called pink slime, which is a, a coloring and a preservative that takes the oxygen out of the meat. Preservatives, antibiotics, hormones, that stuff stays in the meat and it goes into your body. I mean, and you really need to watch what you put in there. Locals discuss what their stores and businesses have to offer. We sell mostly organic products. Most of it is local. We got local honey and uh, jams and jellies, and we try again to buy as natural 
foods as we can so that you know what you're eating and it's not full of chemicals. Eggs are grown here on the farm. Uh, the cows are in our pastures. We don't give them any antibiotics or hormones or anything like that. We have tomatoes and beautiful cucumbers and pickles and squash and zucchini. All the food that we have is local. God, we have beautiful stuff here. I wouldn't buy produce from the supermarket just for the mere fact I want to support my community. Buying local helps out so much because, well, it helps the farmers out. And usually it goes farther than that because they actually help out the community as well. I'm Katherine Sorrell. Wildcat News. Thanks, Catherine. Jarrett, Europe just looks so beautiful. I really want to go. Well, Marissa, one Wildcat talks about his native country of Denmark. We asked Ludvig Ravenluki where he's from and how different the U.S. is compared to Denmark. Uh, I lived in um, a city um, five miles outside from Copenhagen called Bausvær. It was different because it was kind of, for me at least, it was easier somehow because I didn't have to have a car or a license to get around and meet my friends and I, because it was a smaller country and everything was much closer to each other especially because I lived in the capital uh, of, Copen of uh, Denmark uh, then I could easily get around on my bike and meet my friends. Raven Luki tells us about what he misses most about Denmark. Mm, I miss my family a lot. I moved here with my with my two parents um, and my sister. Raven Luki shares his difficulties adjusting to a new language and talks about some common questions he is asked. In the beginning, I had a really hard time adjusting to the language because uh, first in the, in the classes and you know in school, I didn't really know many of the terms that the teachers they used. And many people, they ask me where I'm from or uh, do you speak Danish or uh, why did you move here? That's probably the most common questions I get from people I meet, I meet around here. Raven Luki tells us about his stress relievers from living in a new country. Soccer is definitely my escape because I played soccer since I was eight years old. So I've been playing soccer for a long time and I know how it works. And when I go to practice uh, with my friends here from the school or when I have been going to practice the last half year, um, with the guys uh, from my school, I knew how it worked and I could easily just uh, forget everything about school and everything outside from school and I could just play soccer and do what I, what I like to do. It's been great getting to know Ludwig this year. Well, that's all for this week. If you have any questions, comments, or story ideas, email us at wjstudentmedia at gmail.com. If you want to watch Wildcat News at home, on the go, or even catch up on previous episodes, go to wildcatscratchpost.com slash wildcatnews. And finally, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at WJ Student Media. I'm Marissa Green. And I'm Jared Spann. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you after Thanksgiving break.